O Atama à Frente, to deal reacting to Poorest Region of America by Peter Santanello. This should be a fascinating video. But before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like on this one, thank you so much, my friend. It's the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, well, in that case, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. You guys end up recommending this one quite a lot. One hour long video. I will try to not pause it too much, but yeah. What a different America out here. If I cruise up some of the haulers, you think that's a good idea? Oh, oh, you, lost you lost him again! A lot of people don't understand it. If it wasn't for coal mines, a lot of these people around here would be starving to death. It feels like everybody picked up and left. Oh, well. I came from a long line of drug users. I will be the first in my family to hold a college degree. Are you the grandma of the hauler? I guess. <laughs> Massive hit to a community like this. I want to show people that we are more than just drugs and coal mining. We work hard, we support our families, and we don't let nobody step in between that. This place got me a little emotional. Okay, um, to be honest, it's a beautiful place. But let me say one thing. I love his, his work. I think it's tremendous to, to be open with you, my friends. And... Um, Reacting to this type of stuff is uh, is probably not even the best for, for my channel since long format does not do that well, but I've been enjoying uh, reacting to, to his videos. So if you also enjoy leaving a like, leaving a comment is always the best way to tell me. Another thing, I believe this is on the mountains in West Virginia, but they will probably talk about that. Let's continue. Good morning, guys. Here in Bluefield, West Virginia. Yep. And today we have quite an adventure we're going on, driving through the south side of West Virginia, all the way over to Kentucky. And this is known, arguably, is one of the most impoverished places in the country. Now this is former coal country. The industry was booming at one time. It's retracted quite a bit. Many people mm. have left, but some have stayed. So today we're going to get far out, as far out as we can, into the sticks, to meet the locals, ask the questions, learn from them, and get a better understanding of what this region is like. Okay. Let's do this. So much green. In McDowell County, and so this is the poorest county in West Virginia. Twenty-five thousand six hundred is the average family income. See a lot of these people have moved out. You have the coal truck here. Looks like an old school, Switchback Elementary School. You know what's crazy, my friends? Is nature takes everything back. You know this belongs to nature at the end of the day and um, you guys might you guys might find this crazy but i'm finding this place tremendous in terms of natural beauty i think west virginia is one of the most beautiful places in america um sorry i mean two minutes and i already did a lot of pauses let, let, let's continue so these tracks right here have brought out tons and tons of coal and since a lot of that coal has declined well, this is what happens to the towns. These were once thriving, Seems, uh, busy storefronts, people walking around. Old you city, you know. Up here above. I'm sure those were like the managers, the coal mines. You can see a lot of these homes, just nature coming back, taking them over. Got a little grocery deli. Hmm. It's like a jungle out here. <laughs> Yeah. Forests, very lush. Oh, I love it. Very peaceful. Very closed. <laughs> this old place here. Looks like it's been around forever. Oh, can you imagine the 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 stories that uh, the person that worked there have to to tell us, my friends? This is the typical. Uh, I believe you guys call this diner, right? I would love to visit one. What the hell is going on with my camera? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's continue. A staple of the community. Pictures of families, people from the town, I'm sure. 
Oh, that's too bad. But what a different America out here. Look at this architecture. Some beautiful buildings. Yeah, I love it. What town is this? This is the town of Kimber. How long have you lived here? Uh, be four years this December. I moved okay. here for work. Cole? Yes. You don't think this video is going to make a hundred million? I don't, I don't think so. Maybe if I was six, five, 260 pounds full of muscle, maybe. Up, hey, Kenny. You all right? I'm doing good. Thank you, Kenny. And, uh, that's my neighbor. He's... T, hey, you 76 yet? I'm 77. 77. <laughs> this gentleman is uh, making a video. Making a video? Of this area. About Appalachia. Oh, about Come on over, you T. Wanna, you want to jump in, T? <laughs> well, T's, T's got stories, I can tell. His, his name is Fred Johnson, and his wife's school children, she's a teacher. Okay. Good. Good to see. Nah, it's a rental truck. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your name? Peter Santanello. Peter Santanello. Well, nice to meet you. Yeah, you too, T. You, you won't find a better man than T. <laughs> I T, don't know. T's the best man in town or, or all of McDowell County? I'd say in, in all of McDowell County. <laughs> Thank you, Clarence. <laughs> Thank T, you, man. did you grow up here? No, I grew up in Towsville, Towsville, Virginia. So how's yeah. McDowell County? It's good. It's good. It's a nice, wonderful place to live. People are friendly. Everybody's yep. friendly down here. You don't meet a stranger. Yeah. You know, if anybody can help you, they'll help you. If you're sitting on the side of the road at night and got a flat tar, they'll stop and change it. Or if they can't change it, they'll bring you home. Because we had a flood here back in 2001, 2002. And mm -hmm. a lady from Bluefield worked at the Welch Hospital. Uh-huh. And the water was up all the way through there. And she got to the end of town. And uh, somebody called me, and I went down and got her and brought her up. And, she spent the night with us, me and my wife. I let her stay with me. So <laughs> I didn't know her from, from Adam. <laughs> so a lot of old Okay, I like T already. <laughs> Sorry, a bit of a random comment, but I like him. I like him. I, this guy, this is a good guy. Old school values out here. Oh, this also seems a good guy, but I like T. <laughs> school values, a lot. What about the younger generation? <laughs> they're gone <laughs> they're, they're leaving they're leaving town they're leaving town and the ones that are here uh, they don't they don't really care about anything they, they just most of them don't drugs <laughs> really the drug most problem, of them drug problem. Problem here. Yeah. so from my understanding talking to some locals it's either people are on drugs or people are super hard working there's like no in between right. no it's in like between. you got two different groups right, right. that's right mm -hmm. two different groups mostly everybody around here is elderly except clarence <laughs> i'm 60 and i'm not elderly <laughs> well yeah t's you know, t's 77 mm -hmm. and looking like you're about to play a some hoops and, and dunk the ball <laughs> yeah, thank you <laughs> yeah i used to in my day i did in my day but uh Old age catches up with you. Eventually. Eventually, old age catches up with you. Did you ever work in the mines, T? No, I was an electrical motor repairman. Okay. I worked in that job for uh, 43 years. We re repaired uh, mining motors, steel mill motors. Yep. I've been, I've been, I, I guess I'll just about all over the world working on different motors and stuff. What do you mean, be careful going to Harlan County? Why? On the road. There's a bunch of drunks on the road on the weekend. This is 4th of July weekend. You got to watch out for it. The young folks. Okay, what about a, what about if I cruise up some of the haulers, like just randomly up some of the haulers? Sorry, a hauler is a narrow sheltered valley between two hill sides where people live. Okay, okay. Um, by the way, another thing, my friends. Um, so this uh, drug problem is getting more common in America because, I mean, there is drugs here where where uh, in my country, as you can imagine, but. Uh, I don't think we have a problem with with this, but it seems like sometimes when I react to American stuff, they tend to bring this type of stuff. Uh, you guys have been seeing um, an increase on this problem. Please tell me in the comments. I, I would love to know, um, you know, your your perspective and the comment section is, is for you, my friend. You think that's a good idea? Or just depends the one I go up? Uh, it, it depends on the one you go up. Okay. It really depends. Some might. of the hollers are real bad too. Right. I mean, the roads and 
Yeah, the roads are real bad, even though you got a forward. You know what they call this, McDowell County? They call it the patch. So could I fit in to the patch, no problem? No problem, you fit in. Just you gotta, to just gotta put a little of that on. That's all. Just a little bit of personality and it. attitude, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be your neighbor, Mr. T. Pretty much everyone's involved with the coal industry here. There is a tourism industry starting uh, with side-by-sides and people getting out on these trails here. But as you can see, even the Walmart A massive hit to a community like this. In the town I was staying in, Bluefield, if I wanted to get groceries, the best place was the Walmart. You want to get an avocado, you want to get probably the most fresh fruits and vegetables outside of a garden. It was Walmart. And so when you have it go away in a community like this, I mean, we're sort of entering, I think we'll get into it today, sort of food desert territory where it's a far away to get pretty much all your staples. You know, outside of mini marts and chips and sugar drinks and whatnot. Very interesting story I was told yesterday by a local. And he told me back in the day with the coal mining companies, the miners would be paid in scripts, which was their own currency. Each coal mining company had their own currency. The catch was you'd have to go to the equivalent of the Walmart back then which was a massive general store, depending on the mine, where you'd buy your food, your clothing, whatever you needed, you'd buy there. But you could not take that currency and go anywhere else with it. You wanna leave town, you wanna go off to the coast on a vacation with your family, uh, forget about it. Your money only worked for the business that you worked for, which is insane. Okay, this is a wild story, is this true? <laughs> Okay, I was trying to not comment, to, to not pausing, but uh, to be honest, my friends, a store like Walmart probably gives a lot of life to a city like this. And when this closes, mm, that's bad news. Um, but that story was insane. Oh, I love it. Wow, look at this place. It looks like a massive old school up there. Wonder what it is now. We have a jail down here. I think that's what that is. I was told in the last town, one of the nicer homes there was sold for $25,000. So something like this is, is almost a giveaway at this point, I bet. What? Closed permanently, 313.23. The Panda Garden out of business. Every oh, but come on, you, you guys can see that is so much potential in a city like this. Don't, don't, don't you guys agree, my friends? I wish the government did something, you know, because um, it would be nice to have those places to be active again. Everything pretty much vacant. I walk right down the center of the street here. Oh, this is crazy to me, man. Back in the day, you can see the boss looking over the workers. Very, very hard work. Looks like an office or some sort of manufacturing. Yeah, it just feels like everybody picked up and left. Very cool old building. I was told by a local the other day that these rivers just flowed black back in the day. Whoa. Socialsecurity.gov. Now we gotta meet some locals eventually, but I was told 
in these parts, and I can't confirm this at all, but roughly half the people are living off some sort of disability or food stamps or some government assistance, and half are working their butts off. So food stamps, my friends, is uh, basically you give a stamp for the for the person to eat that day, I'm assuming, or uh, for two meals, something like that, right? Okay, there are two guys up there. First two people in town on the streets. Mm -hmm. Iraq from 05 to 06? 05 to 06 in Baghdad. A lot of guys here were in the military? My man here signed up, didn't get to go. I mean, he went in, was going to go in together. And uh, he had to clear some stuff up. <laughs> were, you, uh, were you sad that you couldn't go or did you oh, want to yeah. go? Yeah, I wanted to go back. Do you guys work in the mines? Yeah, he, he, he worked in mines. I, more did. I don't anymore. I you, did, don't, you don't anymore? No. You ain't got time to spend no money, so, I mean, you don't enjoy life. I mean, just ain't nothing enjoyable about it to me. So a miner, how much are they working? Uh, I would work 48 hours every week at least, but sometimes 60 hours, 60 plus hours. And that's, that's underground? Yeah, underground. For 60 hours? 60 hours a week. What does that do to your sleep cycle? Uh, it's terrible. You're always tired, you're walking around, you're a zombie most of the time, you know, so. It's not for me. Now, a lot of people it is for, but it's just not for me anymore. I did a whole three weeks in the coal mine. You did three weeks. The whole three weeks. What was what work did you like better, military or coal mine? Oh, military, for sure. Good brotherhood in the military. Can't find it nowhere else. What about the coal mine? Good brother brotherhood there. I wasn't there long enough to know, but yeah, yeah. They, they do stick. Oh yeah, it's definitely man. brotherhood there. Everybody looks out for each other. How about in Welsh right now? Is it a close community? People. Uh, oh yeah. Pretty yeah, tight. It's, yeah. yeah, it's pretty tight here. Everybody looks well, out for one another. You know. To get out of here, this town. You yeah. know, everybody's so many different walks of life, but you get out of here, you got the hollers, you got families, <laughs> they tight. If you get in a holler, everybody knows everybody. Oh yeah. You be a kid down there and get in trouble down here, time you get home, You're about boy. five people then called your mama saying, hey, time you get there, they are waiting on you. Everybody, everybody knows. knows everybody. It's not a good thing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had a few friends telling me, don't come into this part of Appalachia. It's going to be super dangerous. People are going to be closed off. Huh. And I've, I, everyone's been cool. Oh, yeah. Like Nobody, everybody. Nah. everybody er, hey, people from out of town and stuff, we get it a lot. You know what I mean? Most of these people on these corners, side by side, they're from other states. They're not from here. I just come down here just to see the, the country and the mountains. That's, that's the new industry, huh? You got a bit of tourism out here? Yeah, that's, oh, that's, 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 that's helped the little stores really good. Yeah, since okay. they built that uh, Hatfield McCoy Trail, yeah. it's, it's been mad people coming here from out of town. It's been crazy. Why the bars here? Is there a lot of crime or no? Uh, like Break-ins? Not really. It's just this, this area right here, uh, I guess... Probably in the early 2000s, it was pretty pretty rough, you okay. know. Okay. Uh, but now everything's kind of calmed down, Way settled back. down. So <laughs> there's not a lot of thieving and stuff like that now. But there used to be. That that stuff's probably yeah. That place that come in in the 90s. Okay. Yeah, okay. Store probably, so it's gotten better in that oh, sense. Oh yeah, it's gotten better and better and better. It just keeps getting better. It keeps getting better. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean, I mean, the, the population's going down. Or you walk out here, you get every one of these streets would be full, and everybody, it'd be bumper the to bumper younger generation, traffic. Our generation, most of them left here. Yeah. We just How get, old are you? I am uh, 40. So, about mo 40, 40, most of them left, so when... Wait. Okay, this guy looks older <laughs> than this one. But, um, okay. So, I'm, I'm not pausing too much right now, because uh, I feel like, uh, yeah, I, I have nothing to add, and... Uh, I'm enjoying the video, but this is um, a different side of America that I was not that aware. I, I have to be honest, uh, still a beautiful place, but um, yeah, I mean, you can see that, that there is some problems here for, for sure. Way back when the streets were busy, when are you talking, 20 years ago? Uh, in the 90s, probably, probably it slowed down in the 2000s. It slowed down gradually since the 50s. And the younger yeah. kids just don't like to get outside, or what? Uh, they, these these last two or three generations, I believe they don't really get out much. Uh, wow. Most of them can't change a flat, so they ain't they ain't, they ain't uh, it's a different breed than what we was how we was raised. They you know? tell you how to play any kind of game, any kind of PlayStation game or anything like that. Fortnite. <laughs> so they're inside on the screens. That's yeah. all they do. You guys don't want to leave. You want to stay. Oh, I'm, if I didn't have three babies here, I'd done been gone. If I didn't, I've been gone a bunch of a couple times, a few times, and 
I always end up back. It's a gym now? Did you go to school up there? Uh, it was a uh, uh, high school then. Then as the years went, uh, as the years went by, it turned, it turned to a, a junior high school. How was it back in the day? It was real nice. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids? Mm -hmm. this How you been doing? I've been doing well. Thank you, sir. This, awesome. used, to be, this used to be a booming place. It was booming. Back in the before, well, when the mines shut down, the country and the economy went down, people left and then the business, uh, business shut down. At one time, first could buy anything you wanted here in Welch. If you left Welch because you wanted to quit, all kinds of different grocery stores, cash stands, bus terminal. You could buy everything you needed. You could buy everything that you needed. When did the Walmart shut down? Uh, I don't know what my mother was while back. It's been, while. While. So it's been a while back. Okay, so you love Welsh? Been all my life. Yeah, good people out here. Good people around. Danny, you work in the suntan. You're out there on the I love the, the, the pool <laughs> side with the ladies, or what? Somebody, somebody <laughs> Looking right, good. You're getting darker. You will look like me out uh, there. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go up there, guys. Can I? I can't walk in or anything, right? No, it's got a heel bar to go up. Uh, like okay. A driveway. But, yes. but, uh, but uh, you feel free to uh, go away and take the water go. Okay. We have a good man. You too. Thank you. God bless. Nice people. There are the guys down there looking up at the school that they went to. It's the cycle of life, and everywhere is always at a different point in the cycle maybe there'll be a time where to be honest that's very well said it's a cycle of life and at one point you know the cycle the the prime was here right now it's not anymore but uh, i actually liked what, what he said there people will see this as a place just to get away from everything appreciate the architecture some industry would have to move in because everything's cheap here as far as living costs but it looks like so if there wasn't a lot of crime slash drugs here this would be an amazing place to live if you want to retire and have peace of mind right my friend there's some bunk beds in here new windows so that's being used actually maybe not because when you retire you probably need the um, health care a bit more and maybe yeah never mind <laughs> but you guys get the point if uh, there was that this could be an amazing place. God, I love this old style. It's really cool. Oh, it looks like a nursery. Or something for kids. So the guys used to run through here between classrooms. You can almost hear the door banging open and closed. The laughter off the walls, down the stairs. Recess about to happen. The bell going off, 3 o'clock, end of the day. Gonna get out in town and hang out with friends. This place got me a little emotional. You guys are missionaries? Yes. Yeah, we're missionaries. Yeah. From Utah. I'm from uh, Utah. He's from Utah. I'm from Oregon. You know Appalachia pretty well at this point. At least this portion of it. I think out of all areas, this like the Welch, like uh, McDowell, a little bit of Wyoming is about the most like West Virginian type like deep population you can get. How have you been received in the haulers? On the haulers? Pretty well, actually. You, very well. People out here, very humble people, very kind. I've served in uh, Ashland, Kentucky, uh, down parts of. Um, Virginia and stuff. Yeah, and then out here. It's been you know, the most kind people that everyone will let you in a lot of time They're offering like food and stuff and, and it's just really really nice people mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a good place to be a missionary. Yeah, because yeah, some, some so. places in America I'm sure the door just shuts in your face really quickly. Oh, yeah, sorry. I did that once a long time ago <laughs> you you <laughs> Sorry, I forgive you <laughs> Okay, you got some names. Yeah, I just wrote down the uh, Panther, Panther and Jolo. Jolo. Those are two places. Mm -hmm. I gotta go. Yep. People Take care. Here. Good luck. You too. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Take care. If you don't ever see me again, I'm in Panther. Gotcha. Let so. my wife know. <laughs> don't go so, looking for the body. All right. See ya. It's always interesting to see the missionaries out in the world. They go absolutely everywhere and have zero fear. Take some cojones. It's a one-way road. What, a car every 20 minutes, huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yes.
You guys live right up here. Yeah. Right, she lives right there, and I live in the first yes. house on the corner. So, what were you saying about your work these days? I work 68 hours a week, six days a week. 68. Yep. What's your shift from every day? Five to five, five a.m. to five in the evening, and all the overtime I want. Do you think people in the country don't understand coal coal work that well, or what are your they thoughts don't. on that? Working in coal mines, even if it's underground or on top of the ground, it's hard work. Believe and it. you go out 10, 12 hours a day. If you go in the ground, you don't see daylight until the end of your shift. Yeah. You work out over top of the ground, you got the heat, you got trucks, you got inspectors you got to deal with. It's not an easy job. A lot of people don't understand it. If it wasn't for coal mines, a lot of these people around here would be starving to death. They wouldn't have electricity. They wouldn't have heat. And here you got the government and everybody wanting to shut the coal mines down, do away with this, do everything electric. Well, you got to have coal to run electric plants. And a lot of steamships have to have coal to run to transport goods back and forth. Mm -hmm. And a lot coal. of your coal goes to China, right? Yeah. It's just, you got to learn the people, you got to learn the culture. And with people out here, everybody thinks we're just dumb country folk. But actually, a lot of us out here are smarter than a lot of people give us credit for. Yeah. We work hard, we support our families, and we don't let nobody step in between that. People out here will bend over backwards to help you. They'll give you a shirt off your back, as long as you don't make them mad or cross them. Out here, a man's word and his handshake is his bond. That hasn't gone away? No. A lot of places around here hasn't. Thanks. You know what? I love this guy. You know, I seems like such a, such a genuine person, you know. And um, a lot of things he said right there are probably true. So, um, and people that, that, that drives me crazy, to be honest. People that think that people that live more in the countryside, uh, in the mountains or whatever, are a bit dumber. Those guys are the real, real dumb guys. Uh, it's crazy. This also happens here, you know, in, in Portugal. Uh, there is, of course, or countryside, and sometimes there is also that stereotype. And uh, my parents came from that side of the country, so that's why I, I always, yeah, this is such a nonsense that uh, people may, honestly, just shows their ignorance, to, to be honest. I really like this guy. You see, guys. You, you, be careful, nice buddy. you too, all the best. Leave a like for him. <laughs> Man, what a great video so far. All right, guys, so this is a hauler. And the hauler is just a narrow road that goes up a valley off mm. the main road. So what I've been told is in most haulers, everyone knows everyone really well. And, you know, an out-of-state or car or any different car than they're used to it's uh, it's well known so depending on the hauler and this is just what I've been told it can be uh, very friendly very warm and welcoming or the opposite but from what I've seen so far in West Virginia everyone's been very 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 friendly yeah and hospitable so let's see if we can get up here and I don't know what we're gonna see. Okay, this looks quite more poor right now. Let's look a little sketch. All right, sometimes you just can't put the camera on things and they were uh, junking out on something. Anyways, they were nice at least. I mean, we're deep in now. This is deep, deep, deep countryside rural America. There's oh, another this group is of so guys crazy I to me. To, uh, down the road before I couldn't put the camera on them. That's the problem. You can't just come up and be like, can I put the camera on you? I have to feel it out. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys are used to, maybe not used to, but know of how they're portrayed. And, you know, most people, not all, but a lot of them that come into this part of the country, put them under the bus, make them look make them look bad and so rightfully so they're hesitant to be on camera and I would be too 100 percent I totally get it so it's about feeling it out and then uh, if they're cool then 
it's awesome. I can get that conversation on camera and give you guys a look of what it's really like here. We got quite a journey though ahead. It's at least another four hours or so to Kentucky because we took this back. Four hours. Yeah, everything in America is, the distance is something that I, four hours you go almost, you cannot see the entire country in Portugal, but uh, put more two, three hours and you, you can cross the country. <laughs> So beautiful, man. Looks like maybe an old school renovated into apartments. The guy's washing okay. his house. You can see the soot, which means we're on a coal route. The trucks carrying coal are on this road. Oh boy. What? So this is definitely a more built out hauler. We got some houses that are barely there, but then uh, some newer stuff. So it's a real mix. I'm gonna ask these guys here what's going on. How you doing? You can come out in. Oh, thank you, ma'am. So this this is a nice hauler, is that fair to say? Yeah. What's that? They call they call this number one bar a long time ago. Oh. They got the uh, now they changed the uh, what is, what's the name up now, May? Bartley uh, Branch Road. Bartley Branch Road? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the haulers are basically, they go up a valley. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Is that the story? Yeah, everybody knows everybody. Everyone knows everyone's business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been here since 69. You, well, you've been here since 69? Yeah. Has it changed at all? Oh, yeah. I thought you might be interested in looking at this. I Thank you, ma'am. Tells about all kinds of mines all around McDowell County. We're still in McDowell? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're in McDowell County. And so coal is everything here, right? Yeah. Coal's the history here. You know, Biden and uh, Manchin want to take the coal out of West Virginia. What are the people going to do? Uh, that's the only thing people got to live on, you know, working in the mines. It's the only economy out here, That's huh? the only, there ain't no factories in here, you know. And coal mines on thing keeping this place going. Did you work in the mines? Yeah, I worked in the mines. How many years? I worked a long time, then I made pillar falls and stuff. You had to, you know, crawl on your knees, run and stuff on that. You take all the coal out on your pillars. Sometimes the tops are heavy, the timbers won't hold the top. Oh, okay. Or the roof bolts, yep. you know, roof bolts and all come out. When I told a, a buddy of mine, I said, hey, the miner uh, cut too far against the, the wall. Or I said, water's uh, peeping out the right side of the corner of the cut. We got water in the in the man trip we was riding. We was in the back of it, and that water was uh, 12 breaks of water backed up. And it just blowed that coal out just like a explosion, you know. The water was deep, but you feel electricity. We had rubber gloves and suits on, but you could still feel power through. You saved some coal miners? Yeah. How many? I had about eight of us working on the eating ship there. You that, saved eight people? Yeah, when that water blowed out there. Wow, wow. So this, you. this chapter right here tells you all about what happened down here at this mines, and then it gives you a How many of, people died in these mines here? Uh, I think they said there were 90 some. 90 something people 91. died. 91. Wow. Down here at this yeah. mines in Bartley. 
It's got oh. it's got all their names listed. There's the big monument. It was down here at Mount Holler, and they moved it. Moved it up right up that the front road. church, right up from me. Yeah. yeah. So do you guys, I mean, you you talk about it all the time. You live, you eat, and breathe it, right, Cole? That's, yes. Yeah, that's the only thing keep us going, you know. Yeah. Mine's just like being at home to me. You know, I work, when I work every day, just like being at home. You know, the mine's really safe from what it is out here. You gotta get killed with a car or a or plane. This is a man and his young son. Both of them were killed down here in this mines. Mm. So you were saying when Biden came in, he tried to shut the mines down, his policies? Well, they talked about mansion and Biden is against the coal. If we don't get somebody in there for the coal, we're going to everybody be losing 100,000 jobs around here. So no Is this true, by the way, that Biden wants to stop the, the coal mines? And um, if that happens, I hope there is a plan for uh, to help this these regions, right? Uh, I mean, we we cannot forget people like like them. So it's interesting. I looked in McDowell County the the voter records. It was very blue here, like seventy percent Democrat, and then Ooh, it just changed the last couple of elections to hard red. Yeah, every because mm -hmm. because of the policies, right? Yeah. So whatever policies support coal, you're going to vote for that guy. Yeah, Trump, oh, makes Trump sense. for the coal, yeah. and General Justice for the coal, you know. Yeah. And uh, if we get somebody in there want to go uh, windmills or gas, uh, everybody be out of job around here. Yeah, what would you do if you didn't have coal? Well, if we didn't have coal, everybody be hurting because they got to make steel with that coal. And, you know, a lot of things they make with coal. And if we don't keep the coal, they ain't going to have no coal to make steel or stuff with. So you can't make steel with gas, natural gas, or oil, right? You have to make it with coal? Yeah, you have to make it with coal. Something, you know, burn hot coal. Natural gas ain't going to make metal. My dad was killed down here in this mines before I was born. Mm. He was killed in March, and I was born in August. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. And my late husband, he he didn't work this mines, but he worked what they called the wagon mines. When we were first married, he worked. They had cars. They called them cars then. They hold what, Jay, a ton or so? Yeah, two ton. They, 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 they wasn't very high. Okay. And uh, the coal was real low, and he would come home and tell about how he would lay down on his side and take a big shovel, and the shovel was about this wide. That's a number four shovel. Take it and shovel that coal up in them cars. And they'd hold a ton to two ton of coal, and he got a dollar a car. Do you have internet out here? Yeah. You do? Yes. Great. I was told <laughs> you didn't. Part time. <laughs> Part time. <laughs> yeah, part time internet. Part time. <laughs> so not oh, it what? It, it, like, it goes in, in and it. out. Sometimes when it goes, comp you know, out, it'll stay out for days and weeks at a time. <laughs> okay. Wow. Like so the telephone. Sometimes they go out for two weeks, don't they? Make. Or more. The or telephone more. goes out for two weeks. It's crazy. I don't, have, I don't have what they call landline phone no more. I just use cell phone. You get cell phone coverage now. Turn right to go around the foot, y'all. This hauler. So if I go up to the top, you think that's okay? Yeah, sure. you're gonna, you're gonna travel all the way. Try and go past the gray, go away to the top, go out past the graveyards, and just keep on going. And then when you get out there past the church, you'll turn down a hill, and when you get right at the bottom there, make you a lift. So it's a cir it's a circle. It's a circle. Yeah, it's a circle. I won't come back this way. I'll just keep going around. If you okay. want to. Yeah. Okay, I think I'll explore. Why not? Thank Would you. you like a cold bottle of water? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Yeah, so nice. Appreciate it. Yeah, I love this lady. Married well, you married? Yeah, I've been married. Uh, let's see. My second marriage, I've been married now. There you go. Thank you so much. You're How welcome. long I've been married, mate? Twenty uh, years. Uh, How long I've been married? Twenty years. Long time, Jay. Long time. I said he married well. He married the right woman. He married my ex-daughter-in-law. <laughs> Wait, he's married to you. He, he, was, he married my ex-daughter-in-law, and okay. his brother is married, one of his brothers is married to one of my daughters. Yeah. <laughs> and now you two are married. That's weird. No. No, no, no. Oh. 
I thought you were husband and wife. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oof. Okay, this was, uh, my mind was doing cycles right now. Oh, okay. I was like, what, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Never mind, we are back. <laughs> Ooh, save it. <laughs> save it, my friend, save it. Right a bit back. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, never mind, never mind. I thought you were husband and wife. I'm sorry. No, no, no. We're just, I've known him all his life, so. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Like I said, he married my oldest son's ex wife. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'll stop and sit around and talk to her, you know, and she don't get too much, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, too much company anymore. Every time I brought to my brothers, I'll stop to see her, stop down here and talk to you, don't make yeah. Oh, that's cool. So you guys are all connected here. Everyone knows everyone. Yeah. That's cool. That's nice. You don't feel lonely. Uh, if something goes wrong, something happens, the neighbors pitch in and help. They do what they can, you know, a death in the family or sickness, you know, bad sickness, somebody gets hurt or something. Pitch in, like just... Put their time in, or they actually put help with money too they if they need it. They help with money, you know, and death. They uh, they cook food, bring it in. Okay. All that. Even if it's different families. Yeah. That's great. That's really special. I have, I That's know amazing. I have been down this road here in this holler. Yeah. You know I everyone. The, I watched them grow up. Small. You know one thing, my friends. When and I, I mean, my city is not a giant city, but. It's a fairly big city, but sometimes, and in America, you guys have even more than this. Uh, uh, sometimes, when people live in those cities, they there is a lot of people alone, you know. And uh, you know, I don't get me wrong. I know this is not uh, the perfect scenario, but at least they have sometimes people to talk. And uh, trust me, there is a lot of people that don't have that in in big cities. So there is something positive, you know. Kids, they played with my kids. Are you the grandma of the holler? I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's into the holler. We have the Dunford Family Cemetery. Just past some great people. They came up to the door here. We were talking for a while. I just couldn't run the camera. Just a lot of that. But I'm getting some of it. I'm getting some of it for you guys. Come on, this is fantastic. I'm sure this is super important to the locals here. Family is absolutely everything here. Many generations living under one roof quite often. And in these haulers, some of these families came four or five generations ago and have stayed. And I've been told some never leave. They actually like, just never leave the hauler. Or maybe they get out a bit, but Charleston, the capital, is like a world away. Forget about DC, New York, California. Those are like a different galaxy. Well-kept cemetery, Dunford Dial. Another Dunford, Dunford, Dunford. This is the Dunford Row. And we're not gonna get a name on those. Gus Cyphers, very short life of 18 years. What is this sound? I don't know what's going on over there. All right, just had the coolest conversation with a guy. It's Dude, no joke. I would be in panic mode if that happens to me. It's too bad. He didn't want to be filmed. Uh, him and his family were out there at this pretty nice house. He works as a manager. I believe it was a manager at uh, one of the coal companies. They cannot hire young people straight out of high school without a college education or anything for eighty to $100,000. He also stated roughly... 60% of kids under 20, so I'd, I'd say teen years, are on drugs of some sort and don't want to work. So I hate that's to crazy. put the negative story in here, but I like to capture the reality. And that's one man's opinion and his experiences. Doesn't mean it's, you know, through and through fact. Uh, but that's how we learn about, like, the local, on-the-ground perspective. 
great guy, really cool guy, but a bit pessimistic about like the future of this place because of the drugs and the fact that kids just do not want to work. He was 45, I think, and said, yeah, in his generation, it was everyone got to work. And now he said, this is, this is gonna die out out here eventually. He also said there are prostitutes in some of these small towns. The dope heads don't mess with them because everyone's packing. The lady, <laughs> grandma of the holler, uh, the dope heads don't mess with her. because She'll shoot them, he said. Just such a good dude. Just honest, straightforward, no BS. That's what you get. Just going off these random roads, deep, deep, deep in the hollers of West Virginia. You know what, my friends, we are deep into the video. We are 38 minutes in. I always do this type of stuff because I really want to know if I'm not watching this alone in Portugal. <laughs> because I always have this idea that no one goes uh, so long into the video with me. If you are watching, leave me the comment 38, specific even more if you are enjoying the video with me. Uh, would mean the world. Oops, sorry. Let's continue. to get a lot nicer down here as far as properties. But Virginia has, from first impressions, a bit of a different feel. I gotta say, I miss West Virginia. I met such cool people in that state. Man, I, I love this channel. Here in Grundy, Virginia, been out of West Virginia for just about 30 minutes. Feels like a different world out here. The Walmart is the luxury edition. What? Social media has absolutely destroyed, you know. Wait, what is that, my friends? Luxury edition, Walmart. There is a premium Walmart in America? Oh, wow, that's crazy. Or was him joking? No. An entire generation, as far as the only thing they know how to do is play on cellular phones. So you were saying when I was inside, it's tough fighting kids to work. They don't want to work? Very hard. That they I, Around these parts, I mean, a lot of it goes back to the morals that the families have taught them, and I don't believe they're, I don't believe they're te teaching them the responsibility of work ethic in society. Okay. I was thinking when I got out to the sticks of West Virginia, Virginia, it was going to be a bit immune from that. Maybe I was a bit naive. I honestly thought it would be like kids on the streets, BMX bikes. Society in general, social media has definitely ruined. Now I'm creating social media. But these are long the kind, form videos. The kind, the kind of social media you're doing though, if people look at it, and understand it. Maybe yeah. they'll let their kids get out, you know, and kick rocks, play play kickball. I mean, right. something besides just. Except this one you have working. She we, said we have, she's on it. We have a very we have very few kids that are 18 to 24 that actually get out and try to produce at a job. You're holding this place up, huh? Try. Keep these guys in line. I'm trying. Social media. Is that okay? I'm doing a video on Appalachia. Yep, that's fine. All right, cool. So how about the generation you came out of high school with, Shay? What, what percentage would you say are actually working class Americans at this point? Okay, I don't want to be rude, but uh, what? why is, is this on uh, in his inner chest? What's going on there? At this very point, this from very... my class, um, I would say maybe 50%. 50. If that. Because I personally, I'm going to be honest with you, my best friend from high school is currently locked up in prison for drugs. Uh, so just as you were saying a while ago. I yeah. Have, I've seen multiple people from my graduating class on drugs and I mean, just down a wrong path in general. And these are people that have been given opportunities to, okay. to like 
go further in life and they just choose not to. They're content with being what they are, you know. And what is what is it right now? Fentanyl? Yes. Yes. Bad. 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 Very bad. Very okay. Bad. My friends, this I know this is annoying, but what the hell is fentanyl? I believe it's a drug. But uh, Okay, you know what? We are into into the so long into the video. Let me actually search that for a second because not the first time. Is this really a big problem in America? Fentanyl. Sorry, my friends. Fentanyl. I I have to see. I think this is so important to 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 understand. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is not a thing here at all. At least that I'm aware. Okay. It's really that bad. But who is bringing fentanyl in, into into America? Is something that you guys produce uh, here, or is basically things that come from Mexico or stuff like that? You know. So you're saying fifty percent of kids out here they're working their butts off. Fi oh, I don't want to call you a kid. Sorry. How old are you? Eighteen. I'm twenty-three. Okay. Sorry. Twenty-three. Okay. Young adult. 50% are working their butts off, 50% are junked out on drugs. Yes. Yeah, and a lot of these people, they have kids, and they their parents are raising their kids while they're out here just doing whatever they want to do. They're junked out on drugs, or mom and dad still taking, taking care, care of. of them. It's crazy that we're in the same state right now as Fairfax County, right near D.C., yeah, right? Yeah, That's where right. the power center is. That's yeah. the nerve center of the country. Without a doubt. They're not, they're not really caring about An you out here, An amazing story huh? that we have here, personally, Yeah. I give people a second chance. I always have. Yep. We have a girl here right now who just worked two jobs. She, she finished up 1,400 hours of community service. From a drug pass. From a drug, from a drug situation. She's really straightened herself out, and she is a role employee here. 1,400 hours? 1,400 hours. 1,400 hours. She would go to the courthouse and work 9 to 4, 9 to 5, yeah. come straight here and work 5 to 10, 5 to 11. And then drive almost an hour home. Yep. So when That's you were in crazy. high school, was it hard to avoid the drugs or it was easy? It was just like that crowd's over there and we're over here and I'm not, I have Honestly, nothing to do with it. There, there was drug usage during high school when I was in high school, but it wasn't as bad. Like it was not as easy to get your hands on something, you know? Like, I was one of those people that uh, nobody really talked to me. I mean, I just stayed to myself. I was kind of a A student. I done what I had to do, and then I went home. Okay. And I worked from the time I was 16 until now. Yep. So, and I'm actually getting ready to graduate college with my associate's degree in criminal justice. Nice. So, been here since you're 16. Been here since I was 16. Congrats. Thank you. That's and cool. Yeah, congrats. Kind of hard. Now, are you going to pull, pull over your manager when he's speeding now? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. He used to get pulled over a lot. I can tell you that much. <laughs> and it was harder for me to stay away from it in my generation because everybody was smoking marijuana, which is completely nothing anymore. You well, would be amazed at but as far, what you can walk into a store and buy now. And it's changed that much in five years? Yes. The, the drugs are growing rapidly in this little small community. I hate and, to admit it. And it got it. even worse after COVID. It did, because everybody was just isolated and you had nothing else to turn to well, at that they, point. Or this through my friends. They, but, they make more money at home than they work to get out and work. Yeah. This is true, yeah, this is true. So, oh, sorry, but what was that they make more money at home? But the government gives money, gives gives you money if you don't work. I mean, you can get this here, but uh, it's very little. It's basically just... So what the hell is... I don't understand that, actually. At that point, or at least that's what they thought. They make more money at home than they work to get out and work. Yeah. This is true, yeah, this is true. So all those nice houses coming into Grundy from West Virginia, who are those people? Coal, old money stuff? Or? Some of them. I mean, and then you have, you know, your school teachers. They live in some of the nicer homes. So this is a place where the school teacher can live in a nice home. Oh, yeah. You just got out of high school, right? So how many people... So I basically already understood this. They have some logo and there is a filter for some reason to stop that. But okay. From your high school class, do you know that are out here in our community doing work? 
doing work? Yeah, actually working like you were. I'd say probably around 25%, like the majority of them are either on checks or living with their parents and but I, okay oh, please tell me this in to explain me this in the comments if you are watching on checks what that mean even means checks are for people that cannot work not for people that does not want to work i think those two things are different right eh? um okay i mean they don't really you know i, I work um, you know since my i started working at what 18, something like that. Care to work. I've tried getting them into an engineering program to tell them you need to do something. Mom and dad ain't going to be able to take care of you forever. You're not going to always have people in your life to support you. You have to, you know, actually try to make a name for yourself. But So checks, how do 19-year-olds get checks? Well, see, one of my buddies, he got a check because he had a seizure. Okay. So he gets $600 like every month. What was his seizure from? They said it was from some Japanese disease he had ever since he was born. He was born with it. And one of my friends, he went on disability. He has anxiety. So he still lives with his parents. He still draws those checks. He doesn't try to work. How old? He is 20. Is it legitimate, the anxiety, or is it just like just to get the money? Honestly, I can't tell because he does seem to have like panic attacks. Personally, I believe anxiety is something we all share, and it. I kind of agree with that. I I I have that for sure from time to time. Um, the thing is, don't you guys agree that using drugs can also make those type of disabilities get you know more evident? So things can be real. No, things are related for sure. Not all the time, but a lot of times. It's just something you can work yourself into. But he's always kind of used it as like a right. crutch, pretty much, to get him out of taking tests, to get him out of participating in physical education. Right. Mm -hmm. and so he's, now, milk, he's milking the system. I believe so. Okay. And I like this so kid. A lot, of, a lot of kids your age are doing that? Unfortunately, yes. Me, personally, I came from a long line of drug users. I will be the first in my family to hold a college degree. I have to That's protect amazing. myself in order to keep getting further in life. When they put me on the anxiety and depression medicine, it was just irritation all the time. Like, every little thing. Usually, I'm a very patient person. I train people here on a daily. I have a child and everything. And I'm very cool, calm, tempered. Like, I'm not an angry person at all. And it just, it made me so, like, irritated. Like, every little thing would just piss me off but once I quit taking it like I had a couple days where I just did not want to get out of bed at all it was just horrible but after about a week of not taking it I felt normal and then I figured out you know different coping me mechanisms like meditation um, I do that um, I go on my hikes with my son you know we walk the dog um, you know cool. And we have a whole farm full of animals. Like, we've got lizards, snakes, everything. So, we kind of keep ourselves occupied, you know? So, you're off the medication now? And yep. you found better therapy through nature, walks? Yes. How many people do you think are on medicine? Who's on Roughly. It? Around here? Yeah. I would say quite a few, but what, what percent? They do. What percentage? In this area, 65% of the people would be on some kind of medicine, some form. And I mean, as far as the depression medicine, I'd say well over half on it alone. The thing is, I cannot fat, fat check these type of things. I would love to to know your perspective, my friends, uh, because uh, that's a crazy stat if, if true, or even if it's close. But see, what they do is a lot. We had an employee that worked here. He would not let the medicine get in his system. It would make him do all these crazy things. And then he'd go to the doctor and tell him it wasn't working and they'd put him on something else. And plus he was doing other things with this medicine. I don't know what. And it just, 
And I seen that, and I was going, kids. yeah, 18 year old kid ruined his life, oh, almost. You guys mind if I film this? Is that cool? Let's see if I can hook into it. If I hook into it, you can film the whole thing. I gotta get down in here though. I don't think you'll be able to get down in here. It's all mud. I'll get you from above. I had one that was beating my pole up under the bridge. And then I that one that I just hooked broke me off easily. Yeah, that, that one big one is like that. Am I scaring the fish uh, sitting no. up here? Not really, but I believe I done scared them because I hooked that big one and then it broke me off and Oh, uh, you should have been here 10 minutes ago, man. I missed the moment. Yeah. Hey, so your buddy here was saying you're a diesel mechanic. Yeah. You're going to school for it, right? Yeah. Cool. Good to hear these stories, because I was just downtown, and they're saying kids aren't working at all these days. I want to go to college, get my degree in uh, history and archaeology. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And your boy's here from uh, Indiana? Yep. Yeah. You work at Dairy Queen? Yep. Manager at Dairy Queen. Manager? Nice. How old are you? 16. <laughs> are you the youngest manager in Dairy Queen history? Blew up in 1939. What, the mine? Yeah. Uh, killed like 50 people. It's still up there, too. There's a carving on the mine entrance with the date on it. They brought a bunch of Italian uh, sculptors in here to do it. Oh, no way. That says 1937 on it. The guy I know, Ed Talbot, he's going to start making a heritage trail up there very soon. Cool. So, so you guys really respect your miners. Yes, sir. And then also, we're really proud of our veterans here, too. Not, matter of fact, during the Civil War, uh, this county supplied uh, units for, or supplied men for three units to go in. Uh, the 34th Virginia Cavalry, 10th Kentucky Cavalry, and uh, the 2nd Virginia State Line. You're into history. Yeah. What really got me into it was my grandma telling me stories about my papa. Uh, or about my third great grandfather was her papa. Uh, he was a native, half native, and he signed up in the 34th. He fought. He fought Gettysburg, Sharpsburg, all that. That's what really got me into it. Private Andrew Cole, Company C, 34th Virginia Cavalry, Witcher's Battalion. I got a grant at Longwood University, four years, uh, history, archaeology up in Farmville. They pay in your tuition? Mm -hmm. Full, and, full ride. Yeah, and then two years of it, I'll be spent in London. UK, London. Mm -hmm. Sing for it. Wait, what? Sing for Sing for it. What do you want yeah. me to sing? Follow that... you to Virgin. <laughs> yeah, I sing too. Of course, these boys had to bring it up. Let's hear it. Okay. That before these callous hands and all this word. We used to sit up by the flies Acting like we live forever Getting high and skipping class Yeah, I reckon we were heathens But in her eyes we were saints now we're calling all the boys home Cause heaven's angels carried her away So I can follow you to Virgie And although it hurts me so Lay in rest this mountain beauty That the world's called home And I can see her up in glory I can see her through the pines. Thanks, man. Related to this, I have a music react reaction channel. Oh, that was bad. Never mind. Let's continue. Hey, he tried. That was so cool. <laughs> when you're a and to be honest, I like this kid. Bored kid in Appalachia. I mean, you get into anything that's interesting. I mean, so you, you either get into anything interesting or you get into drugs, right? I mean, pretty much. It is an epidemic here. It's bad. And it's not so much the marijuana and stuff like that. It's stuff like meth, heroin, things of that Jesus sort. I've seen Christ. my family destroyed by it. I've seen other people's families destroyed by it. My stepfather was on the uh, 
the meth real bad. He's no longer with us, cousin. I'm sorry, man. Oh. Uh, but I want to show people that Appalachia is not that we are more than just drugs and coal mine. I mean, yeah. we have history here that spans, if you're counting the Native American history, spans about a thousand years. Right. We have so much more to offer, the, the culture, the music, uh, the people. The people are just yeah. great. I agree. I mean, folks here will, will help anyone. It doesn't matter who you are. That's, that's what I love about it here, is that no matter what your background is, no matter where you come from, they'll help you. Yeah. If you're a good person, if you have respect, they will help you. And yeah, sometimes we get a little rowdy, sometimes we get a little reckless, but you know, just good hearted people. So what do you think I is needed that. in Appalachia? Better leadership, I think. Pride. Not a lot of folks are proud of who they are. They're not proud here. I thought Appalachian people were very proud. Well, the older generation. I'm sorry. No chance this kid is a manager. That, that was a lie, right? But a lot of the younger generation, you know, they've kind of lost their way a little bit. Why do you think they're not proud? Because people's never taught them. People's never taught them where they come from, where they, uh, how resilient they actually are, you know? Right. Because our ancestors, at least mine, speaking for mine, I'm a direct descendant of Viking kings. <laughs> All the kings in Southwest Virginia is descended from Bjorn I. Okay, sorry. Oh, wow, my God. I'm going to hell now. Okay, I, I feel like I'm eating a lot of BS, my friend, right now. I, I'm going to be honest. I have compassion for uh, all of those kids, but uh, what? So this guy is a viking? <laughs> What's up? What? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Speaking for mine, I'm a direct descendant of... Viking kings. All the kings in Southwest Virginia is descended from Bjorn Ironside. First king in America was a guy named Jerron Sweenus Bjornson. He got the last name King as a nickname, as an epithet given to him because he was in the Swedish army. And he was the bastard son of a noble from the House of Munza. Mm -hmm. And he came to Pennsylvania in the 1620s. And his descendants actually moved south. Uh, his great grandson, Lieutenant Matthias Keane, ended up founding Keane Mountain. And he was a soldier in the Continental Army. Wait a second, what if the kid is telling the truth and I'm joking? I mean, badass people. Very badass people. Uh, Makes and, you proud to be a descendant of that, right? Yeah. You got, that was, that was, a, <laughs> that was that, instant, man! That was allowed, I got this. <laughs> oh my god! I just hooked into a guy and lost him. Lost him. Oh, you lost you him. You lost him again. The Romans just copied the Greeks' homework and made it a little different. Who are you a bigger fan of, the Romans or the Greeks? Oh, Greeks, 100%. I kind of do have a little <laughs> bit of beef against the Romans. You have beef against the Romans. A little bit. You know, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm falling in love with this kid again. He really knows history. I mean, maybe he put some uh, sprinkles here and there. I mean, we all do this, right? <laughs> but uh, he seems really into history. Why? Because what they did to the Germanic people, not just Germanics, but the Celts too. The mass genocide, man. <laughs> they got him back. Special Battle of Teutonberg Forest, 85 AD. You know the whole story of Armenians? Actually, no. You, you, you are way more up on this stuff than me. Yeah, yeah. Arminius was a, was a Germanic auxiliary for the Romans, but he defected and was a general for the Germanic tribesmen. Led them into the Black Forest, set trees ablaze, cut them down, divided up the legionaries. It was a bloodbath. General Varus was killed, too. And it also confused the Romans because Arminius was still wearing his Roman armor. And actually, if you go to Munich, there's there's a statue of Arminius. 
me and my camp the you know what we are back i believe on this guy 100 he's actually from he, he's a he's a king viking 100 yeah biden should rec recognize him or sweden i believe he's sweden yeah leave uh, this place go to sweden become king that's the way to go uh lieutenant colonel vincent a witcher camp of the oh. sons of confederate veterans we put up uh, the first confederate statue in buchanan county last year at uh, my family cemetery it was at the grave of my fourth great grandmother elizabeth jackson Kelly, and her husband died during the battle of mcdowell in highland county virginia so okay for many people when they hear confederate all they think is of, of racism immediately nah man what do you what are your thoughts on that like do you have, do you have friends from different ethnicities or is oh, that yeah. an issue oh yeah yeah i, I I don't but have that's a problem with anybody. My fourth great grandfather on my dad's side was a black man who fought in the Confederate Army. His name was Private Nathaniel Hawthorne, and he was a sharpshooter for the 37th Virginia Infantry from Russell County. Racism confuses me. It really does. Simply because of the fact that we all come from the same place. First evidence of humanity popped up in Africa about two million years ago. That's where I, I should not be laughing. We are all human. This is true, actually. <laughs> That's why racism, I think, is, excuse my French, kind of bullshit. You know, it's made to divide people. It's made to tear people down. I didn't get my first cell phone until I was 15 years old. I woke up at daylight, went with my papa. We went, worked in the garden. When it come hay time, we mowed, tattered, raked, all the hay. I threw hay bales since I was eight years old. I pushed around four before bells, uh, Hey, rolls, they're like that big around. I rode them around. Uh, I got a dirt bike one time, messed the wheel up on it. I had to have a whole new chain, had to have a carburetor, everything. Dad looked at me and it was because he wanted me to have responsibility and work for what I got because I'd appreciate it more. And I had to go out, I weed eated, and then I fixed my motorcycle with the money I made. Anything I've ever had, my dad helped me with one vehicle. He paid half on my first vehicle. That's all he done. From now on, I've probably had, I'm 18 and I've probably had 40 vehicles. Oh, oh boy, you are spending too much money on vehicles. You should buy an house or something, man. Oh no, or education. 40. Or just, zero. Just trading up. I'd fix them up, sell them. You can ask Zach, that's all I've ever oh. done. Oh, never mind. It's a business. Yeah. It's work on vehicles. I could take this truck right here, take the motor and transmission out of it tonight, and tomorrow day have everything put back together. So you're saying I believe it. don't work like you did? No, they don't. Some of them do, now don't get me wrong. 50-50? Yeah, because nowadays it's like mommy and daddy spoils you. And I guess that's just how it goes. I Not mean. only that, but a lot of people around here are on, like, checks. They get they get checks uh, for Social Security and... Tell us the entire history of Social Security. He knows that, probably. That's how the youth is brought up here. They, they're brought up that, okay, so my mom and dad live this way, so. Here we go. And ain't a problem I can live way that way, you know? That's what they think. Okay. But you guys weren't brought up like that? No. My mama, I've watched this man, I've watched this boy right here with his mama. They completely redone the inside of a house that was from what, 19 or 1800s? Yeah, my, my house was built in 1910. And I've watched him rebuild that whole house. This man can build anything out of wood. Make you tables, make you chairs, anything you want. Okay. He's a woodwork guy. Yeah. And uh, now, historian. Schooling, you put a book in front of me, I'm an idiot. I'm in college for six months right now. One of my welding classes, I get my diesel, I get my class A CDLs, and then as soon as I'm done with that, I go straight to work. And you're really set because less, less people your age are doing that now, I think, right? right? I think that I'm doing it because, in a way, and it's the only thing that I know. And I lived paycheck to paycheck growing up. That's how it went. It wasn't because dad and him couldn't provide for us. It was because my dad was in a bad motor motorcycle accident and he couldn't hardly walk. But I want more for my kids than what uh, I have. I'm not going to give them everything. They're still going to have to work good. for stuff. Look, I didn't go on my first vacation like an actual vacation, like let's say to the wilderness, till I was with my best friend and I earned the money to pay for it. Because dad, he couldn't walk around the way that everybody else did. And then 
I've carried him from inside my house to his truck, set him in his truck, and then carry him from the truck all the way back in the house because he was on a cane. And, but besides all that, there's kids here that work and they work their hind end off. But then there's them kids that's privileged that it's because of the social security check. Why would you give a drug head social security when he's putting all of his money towards something that is tearing this state down? Why would you do that? Knowing that they are a drug addict. So why do you think they do I it? know at least 20 people. He may have a point that actually. They have to go to the methadone clinic every other week just because they're so hooked and they draw social security. All right, guys, Kentucky, 10 minutes that way, but we're not going to make it today. Just one thing, jokes aside, I, I feel some type of compassion for those kids, to, to be honest, because looking at the story of this guy, for example, seems like was not the best, but uh, he's trying to do better. He wants to, do, to, to give a better life to, to his kids. So I was joking a bit, but I, I actually respect that a lot. Because it's getting dark. Uh, what an amazing adventure. This today. was a Appalachian crazy video, my friends. Through the far most removed part of Appalachia. You can see how important coal is. It's sort of the center point of everything in this region. It's beautiful. The people are fantastic as far as everyone I met today. And some didn't want to get on camera, understandably so. Uh, but you saw some of them on camera, which were great. Yeah. And drugs obviously i mean that's everywhere in the country going up but i think it's even more concentrated here in this region tomorrow meeting up with a fifth generation coal miner in kentucky that will be the next video should i watch that <laughs> man that that could be good actually uh I said the number was 38, right? Leave the number 38 again if you really want me to, to watch the that part in Kentucky, right? That would be interesting. Oh, but this was a tremendous video, my friends. Um, look, some real talk at the end. Uh, um, these long videos, YouTube does not reward you because of that. You, you know what I mean? So I do it because I want to have a good time. I want you guys to have a good time. So... If he's not asking too much, leave a like. Of course, I also have a Patreon if you want to, to support, but you, you, you don't have to do it. Uh, but at least leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, put the number 38 if you end up enjoying this with me, because it means the world, my friends. And uh, great, great content. And that's it for today, my friends. Hope you end up enjoying this video. If that's the case, do not forget to leave a like. Also, consider to subscribe if you are new to my channel. And also, let me remember you about one thing. I have a Patreon community. I put videos there a bit earlier than I put on YouTube. So if you want to support me and have access to early content, go to my uh, Patreon. I will leave a link on my description. Take a look at that. You can also scan the QR code you'll be seeing here. And uh, that's it.